Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's been break with Vanessa Dion, and every Wednesday we check our spiritual vitals, making sure we are where God wants us to be. We're getting a little juice to keep going. Um, we're just hearing from God on this Wednesday morning to see what God may have for us um, that we can take throughout the rest of the week, take throughout the rest of our lives if it applies. Um, so yeah, we're on episode 67, and I thank God for bringing us this far, and I thank God, I thank myself for my obedience, and um, yeah, I thank God for the power to keep going. Um, so yeah, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you God for um, a new day, thank you for a new opportunity to get closer to you, thank you for a new opportunity to hear from you this morning, God. Um, thank you for every life that's listening this morning, thank you for every soul that is yearning for you, God. Um, thank you for giving me the word to pour into everybody this morning. Um, God, thank you. Um, before I ask you for anything, I want to pray and ask you for forgiveness. God, please forgive me for anything wrong I may have done um, to you, to anybody else, or to myself. God, please help me to grow in those areas that need more of you, God. Please um, feed me this morning so that I can pour into your people, God. Please remove me out the way so that your words flow, God. I pray that everybody walks away with something that they can carry throughout their life. I pray that you touch somebody that needs a word today, a right now word, God. I pray that they get that this morning. And I thank you in advance for the shift. I thank you in advance for breakthrough. I thank you in advance for um, chains being broken. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So this morning... um. Sorry, I had got a notification about um, Bath and Body Works having a sale. I'm trying to get my mind right, y'all. Okay, so <laughs> um, this morning, jumping into our episode, um, we have our affirmations. I have four affirmations for us this morning. And um, an affirmation is just a positive statement that helps you overcome your negative thoughts and feelings. They help reinforce positive thoughts and a positive attitude. Proverbs 18 and 21 tells us death and life are in the power of the tongue. So with that being said, it's important for us to speak life over ourselves. Um, I've recently, um, well, I've always tried to, but recently have become more, I think since I've started to read the scripture with this, um, read the scripture of death and life are in the power of the tongue. Um, cause normally, you know, I just say, we're going to read our affirmations. I describe what affirmation is and I keep it, you know, keep it pushing, keep it rolling. Um, but probably like I said, like a month ago, I started to say the death and life are in the power of the tongue. And I've been really mindful and watchful about what I say. Like, um, like, um, oh my gosh, I'm so, I'm so, um, I'm so dumb. Or like, why would I do that? I'm so dumb. You know what I'm saying? Like little things like that. Like, don't speak that over yourself. Like your mind don't really know the difference between like, you just, I mean, it knows when you're just playing, but like, how do I explain it? It's like, just be careful about what you say. That's the life front of power of the song. It's really that simple. Speak life over yourself. <laughs> we ain't going to get too caught up on that point, but just speak life over ourselves. It's important that we do that. And just to reinforce that affirmations, um, they don't replace prayer. So we can speak life over ourselves and say, um, I am amazing. I am great. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You know, we can speak all of this over ourselves. That's great and that's amazing. But it's an add on to our prayers. So it doesn't replace prayer. We still have to pray. We still have to have that communication with God. We still have to make that time to speak to him, to talk to him, to ask, to yearn, to um, apologize, to thank him, whatever. We still have to pray. So affirmation is just an add-on. It's just positive words that you can say to um, help your emotions, your feelings, and your thoughts, and your attitude. So yeah, we're going to jump into our affirmations. I'm going to read one, and you read the next. I'm going to read another, you read the next, and so forth. We have four of them. So, um, and if you don't get them all written down in this one saying, this one, you know, time that we say it, I say it two times. So, um, yeah. Anywho, first one, God will give me wisdom if I ask for it. Second one, I have everything I need for this chapter. Third one, regardless of the outcome, I am taken care of. And number four, my steps are ordered by the Lord. 
And we're going to read these one more time. And when, after we say, after we read them, I want us to take a deep breath in and accept them. And when you say them, I want you to say them with expectancy, you know, really believing in your words, really speaking this over yourself, commanding these over yourself and over your life, over your spirit. And like I said, after we read them, we're going to take a deep breath in and accept them. So the first one is God will give me wisdom if I ask for it. The second one is, I have everything I need for this chapter. The third one is, regardless of the outcome, I am taken care of. And the fourth one is, my steps are ordered by the Lord. I take a deep breath in and let it out. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so... Moving forward, we have our affirmation number one, which was God will give me wisdom if I ask for it. God will give me wisdom if I ask for it. So I'm going to read this scripture out of the Bible. I have two versions. I'm going to read King James first. And then, as we know, I like to read different versions to help me understand the word because I can't fully grasp the um, the meaning in the King James version. But I, I read it because that's I just read it just to get the original, I guess. And then I read another verse to break it down. But anyway, King James Version first. We have James chapter 1, verse 5. James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and unbraided not, and it shall be given him. New International Reader's Version is, if any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and does not find fault. And in the part where it says doesn't find fault, basically like God won't criticize you for asking for it. God won't condemn you. God is not upset about the fact that you had to ask for wisdom. So I'm going to read that one more time. If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and does not find fault. So, um, yeah, you won't be condemned or you won't be um, judged or criticized just for asking for wisdom from God. So you're a we're able to be open with God. We're able to, you know, ask him for things. And then verse six says, but when you ask, you must believe you must not doubt. That is because a person who doubts is like a wave of the sea. The wind blows and tosses them around. The wind blows and tosses them around. Um, when we ask God for something, well, I'm going to just stay on wisdom. This is basically saying that we have to, the affirmation again is God will give me wisdom if I ask for it. So be open to God to ask him for wisdom if you need it, if you need clarity, whatever you need in the situation, wherever you find yourself. Let's say some, a situation hits you in life and you want wisdom on it or you don't know where to go when you need wisdom. God is literally telling us that he will give it to us if we ask, but we cannot be double minded. We can't be indecisive. Like if we will become indecisive and become double minded, if we don't ask in faith, if we're asking God for something and we're also doubting, we're playing two sides. We're being, we're, we're, we're that's how you create indecisiveness is when you don't go, you don't, you don't, go forward confidently in your actions. You don't go forward confidently in what you seek, you're seeking God for. We have to move in confidence because that piece of doubt that comes in, of course, we're human. Cool. And this is a process, but this is a, you know, we got to remember that this Bible is a book of a guide for how we should be. So this is just telling us that that doubt that comes, excuse me, that doubt that comes in is what makes us indecisive. It's because we're doubting God. You get what I'm saying? So, and I can definitely understand understand this scripture along the lines of like, um, there's a huge difference for when I ask God for wisdom or clarity when I'm in a situation, um, when I'm ready to move versus when I'm not. Like when I'm truly ready for breakthrough and change and I'm, I'm really just, you know, a hundred with God versus when I'm just talking. You know, when I really want that peace I'm asking for. Um, but sometimes I may not want it in the way that God wants it. You know, I want it my way. Then I get confused and I go asking other people for their opinions when I already know what God wants for me. So we have to move in confidence and really be sincere that God, I want this wisdom. God, I want this clarity. And what we do after that is what makes the whole the difference. And are we going to move in this clarity? Are we going to move in this wisdom? Are we going to move in this knowledge and apply it to our lives? You know, so um, in verse eight. 
um, verse 8, going a little further down, it says, this kind of person can't make up their mind. They can never decide what to do. Or the King James Version says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. God wants the best for us. God wants the best for us. He wants us to put all of our faith in him and in the plan that he has for us. This is just him saying that, put your faith in me. Don't be in this. Don't be unstable. Don't be uneasy in your ways. Don't be indecisive. Put your faith in me. Put your faith in God. You know, and if we need wisdom to make that decision, if we need wisdom on which way to go, he will give it to us. The affirmation again is God will give me wisdom if I ask for it. You know, we really have to believe that he'll give it to us and it's ours. Um, yeah. And then after that, what you going to do with that wisdom? What are we going to do with the wisdom that he gives us? And when we ask and when we ask for that, that wisdom, we have to have the faith that we'll receive it, you know, receive that clarity and that wisdom. Um, so, yeah, just. I like the fact that also it reassures us that um, God won't criticize us for asking. Like, I really like that part, that God will not criticize us. God will not judge us. Um, he understands that we're not going to know everything. He understands that he's the one that is all-knowing. So, you know, if we need that wisdom and how to go about a situation in our life, um, yeah, we can ask God. And don't forget to leave it there when you ask him. Ask him and walk away knowing that he, he got you. He's going to take care of you. He's going to give you what you need. Um, yeah, so that's it for that affirmation. Moving forward, we have affirm affirmation number two. I have everything I need for this chapter. I have everything I need for this chapter, for this current season in my life that God has me, this current season that I have myself, this current season that is in, I'm in at this time. I have everything that I need. Um, I find it like really crazy when I see myself worrying about certain things in my life, because it's like, do I believe in God's word or not? You know, of course I'm still human, but the way I think is what's the point of doing all of this and saying, I believe in Christ saying, I believe in God. But when the word really matters, when it gets heated, when it gets a little sticky, I can't apply it. What's the point of not utilizing my faith? What's the point of not utilizing his word if I'm reading it every day? If I'm if I'm striving to be Christ-like, what's the point of, of reading all of this and believing if I'm not going to utilize it in my life? Um, and I've spoke on Matthew chapter 6 before. And the last verse in that chapter says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought Sorry, y'all. You know, King James Version kind of split me up every time. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. That's the King James Version. The New International Reader Version says, so don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Don't take thought for tomorrow. And the verse right above that says, "Put, but put God's kingdom first. Do what he wants you to do. Then all those things will be given unto you. Right now, this is putting me in a perspective of like daily, like our daily. This is a daily walk, like a day by day walk we have with Christ daily, as in Pay attention to the right now. This is a daily. Put God first daily. Put God number one today as you step. As you, as you, as you move, as you live, as you are today. Put God in the step that you are right now. Everything that you're worried about will work itself out. Everything will work itself out. And then verse 27 says, can you add even one more hour to your life by worrying? What is worrying going to solve? I know we're human and I'm not saying that we're not, but this is reassurance. This is this scripture and this affirmation is reassurance. That's why it's good to open up our Bibles um, when we're feeling low. It's good to, or what I like to say is I like to, I read my Bible when I'm at a high. So when I'm at a low, I know the word because it's hard for me to open up my Bible when I'm at a low, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's hard for me to pick, pick good sometimes when I'm low because low feels so comfortable at the moment. 
But when I read my word when I'm at a high, I can utilize that word when I'm down, if that makes sense. But that's why it's important to open up our Bible so we can see what God says to our situations that we find ourselves in. You get what I'm saying? And this right here is reassurance. This right here is literally reassurance. Put God's kingdom first. Do what he wants you to do. Then all those things will be given to you. And he's telling us, don't worry about tomorrow. You have what you need right now. Do with what I gave you today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. He got you. He will. He, he will and is taking care of you right now. Tomorrow has its own issues. Tomorrow has its own problems. Focus on today. Focus on what's in front of you. I have everything that I need for this chapter. That's the affirmation. I have everything that I need for this chapter. Trust your God. Trust him to be all that he is. He's a chain breaker. He's a miracle worker. He's a way maker. He's all knowing. And he's with you as you step. Take this as reassurance that God got me. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. I can plan because that's smart. That's using wisdom. But at the same time, I'm not going to worry because I know God is ordering my steps and he got me. Then we have affirmation number three. Um, regardless of the outcome, I am taken care of. Regardless of the outcome, I am taken care of. Sometimes when things don't come out how I plan them, I feel like something's wrong. Or I begin to worry, I begin to doubt, I begin to like get uneasy. Sometimes I do. Um, it's like I pray for God's will, but I also have my own plan. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I have my own way of like how I would want things to go or how ideally I think that they should go. But then at the same time, I'll be praying, God, let your will be done in my life. God, order my steps. God, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, I have my own plan. And this affirmation is basically to say that no matter what happens, I have to know that everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. And I have another scripture, y'all. Romans 8 and 28, everything is working out for my good. Everything. Like, I think that all these affirmations are faith-based, now that I think about it. All of them are faith-based, to strength, ways to strengthen our faith. Um... The first one was God will give me wisdom if I ask for it. I have everything I need for this chapter. Regardless of, this, of the outcome, I'm taking care of my steps are ordered by the Lord. Yes, faith in our God, faith in our walk. For I guess this is for people that are uneasy about God's plan. We're uneasy about how will my life play out. We're uneasy about money, funds, um, this ideal life that we had at this age. Like, you know, when I'm younger, I'm 22. When I'm younger, when I was younger, it's kind of like, oh, I want to, you know, have this by this age. I want to be living like this at this age. Okay, now I'm at this age and things is a little different. So I guess this is for the people that get uneasy about our future or about where God has us and where God is taking us. Um, yeah, we have to just know, like I said, everything is working out for my good. We have to know that we are on purpose. We are aligned with God's will right now in our life. Like I said, these are all really just reassurance of God's will for our life. You are taken care of. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not saying that we can't get emotional. We shouldn't get emotional at all. I mean, I'm not saying that we shouldn't get emotional, but, um, you know, and uh, don't keep it all bottled up. Cry. If you need to let it out, express yourself, talk to God. But at the end of that cry, at the end of that, that, um, that emotional rush at the end of those feelings, we have to say, but Lord, I trust you. That's where the power is. But Lord, no matter what it looks like, I trust you. I trust you. Regardless of the outcome I'm taking care of, no, regardless of how this situation plays out, no matter how it unfolds, if it goes opposite of my own plan, God, I prayed for your will. And sometimes your will doesn't look like mine. Sometimes your plan doesn't look like my plan. But that's when faith has to come, has to come in and I have to trust you. That's when my faith has to be at play. Because if I knew everything and it was all going my way, where would my faith be? You get what I'm saying? So sometimes it's a little monkey wrench in there. Sometimes it's a little turn because we God's plan is far better and far greater than anything we have planned for ourselves. And we have to trust that. This is reassurance to trust that. Trust that. And it goes right into affirmation number four. My steps are ordered by the Lord. My steps are ordered by the Lord. And if they aren't already, if you haven't already ordered, asked God to order them, I'm Say the new affirmation can be, I'm allowing the Lord to order my steps. Let's say you've never said, God, please order my steps. Now it's the Lord. I'm allowing the Lord to order my steps. 
So we have Psalms 37 and 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. This goes with literally the previous affirmation. We have to trust God. We have to trust that we are believing in a living word. This word should be active in our lives today. My steps are ordered by the Lord. Surrender, okay? That's the word that came to my mind. Surrender, 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 surrender to God's will for your life. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I feel like I've really come to a place in my life, and I go in and out of this because sometimes I can allow things to distract me, but I really am adamant on really wanting the fullness of God, the wholeness of what God has for me, all of it. Um, I don't want to leave this earth unfulfilled. I don't want to leave this earth feeling, I don't want to be on the earth feeling unfulfilled. <laughs> like I don't want to be on the earth feeling like, I know God has more for me. I know God has more for me, but like, I don't, I don't like that feeling. I don't like it. Be, like that these, like the people that strive for more and strive that like when you know you have purpose on your life when you know you are chosen when you know that God has something for you I don't like the feeling of feeling like I'm right there but I can't get it like and I, I know the feeling of when I'm walking with God how he just pours into every step that I take and I love it like it's like a high like a like a spiritual high like yes like God, how you this good? You get what I'm saying? Like them feelings, like I love them. And I'm really in a place of wanting the wholeness of what God has for me. So, you know, of course, sometimes it's hard to choose God. Sometimes it gets difficult to go the un uncomfortable route. But I know that that's, that way is greater. I know that that way has more for me. This, this world can give you temporary satisfactions. But God is like... Nah, like <laughs> I can't even get I I can't even formulate <laughs> the words to to express how good it be when I'm on God's side. And of course, I don't always pick the right way, but when I do, it makes it easier to continue to pick him. That's the thing about God is, you know, I slip up, I make mistakes, but whenever I do pick him, it's like he 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 just has to, he has to do it big to keep me here. It's like, he wants me here so much. He wants the great, the, the, the best for me so bad that when I'm with him, he does, he goes crazy. Cause it's like, my child, I want you here. This is like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's all peaches and cream on God's side because the enemy don't like that. So some, you're going to get tried. You're going to get tried because the enemy don't like that. Okay. <laughs> It'd be all cool when you're on the enemy side, you know, everything, all pieces of cream and it's cool. But that's when you should look around like, okay, why everything's so good? Why the enemy not attacking me? Because you over there with him. He ain't, he ain't doing so much because he wants to eat up. Anywho, 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 let me get back, get back on topic. But the point is, it's always worth it. Um, The blessings are worth it. The peace is worth it. The love is worth it. The joy is worth it. Like I said, the world is so full of so many temporary things. Like it's so temporary and short term and like quick, a quick little, quick little fix. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just so quick and temporary. And I'm not saying that God can't bless us with monetary things. You know, sometimes he does pour into us the desires if it's, you know what I'm saying? But when we have the peace of God, you know what I'm saying? Those things that's more spiritual and long lasting, like the peace of God, everything, everything is just shifted that that peace that surpasses all understanding you know those things that we can't see um the things that make life easier the things that make life worth living the things that make us keep going the things that actually put put some stain on us you get what i'm saying like them th you know what i'm saying like those are the things i love god for and back to the affirmation <laughs> my steps are ordered by the lord um let god let go and let god lead you let go and, and let God, you know, lead you. And, and somebody may be wondering, like, what does that look like to let go and allow God to lead me? Like, you know, what does that look like? What do you mean by that? Um, basically, it's kind of like choosing the best decision in each situation um, that you know is right. You know what I'm saying? Even if it may be uncomfortable. That's what I feel like choosing, choosing God and allowing God to lead me is even in those situations where it's uncomfortable to pick the right thing I do anyway. Like it's like the mat like we make decisions all day every day we make a decision. Multiple decisions. We probably made by not even knowing it, you probably made about 10 decisions so far, maybe more. 
you've made a lot of decisions this morning already. So like in each decision that we make as much as we can, picking the right decision, even if it's uncomfortable, it may look challenging. It may be a little, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care if it's as simple as something tells you to get up and organize those shoes. You know, and I know, and God know that your shoes all over your room, get up and organize them. That's something that's good for you. It doesn't always have to be these supernatural, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just choose the best in those little situations, and it helps you in those big situations to to listen to God's voice. You know what I'm saying? Those are different ways we can practice listening to God's voice in those small situations so that when our faith is really being tested, when we're faced with those big situations, it's easier to say yes to the uncomfortable because we can do it in those small places. You get what I'm saying? Um... So, yeah, I'm de- debating now. We're done with our affirmations. I'm debating now if I want to talk about, if I want to jump right into our scripture or talk about the other, I'm going to talk about the other topic I had. Then we're going to, our scripture is short and, well, the scripture is long, but the explanation is short and sweet. But, um, <clears throat> I'm going to just read, I'm going to just, uh, I'm debating. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk, talk about it. So, um, I was watching this, um, video with my mom this instagram live um with my mom and this lady was talking about the difference between a curious entrepreneur and a serious entrepreneur follow me though i'm not talking about entrepreneurship in specific right now but um i'm just saying that the lady was talking about a curious entrepreneur versus a serious one and i guess the live has been in like my subconscious since i've watched it because this week i've been thinking about the difference between wanting better and actually doing better like wanting more, wanting God, wanting Jesus to clean me and purify me versus actually doing the work to obtain it. You get what I'm saying? There's a difference. We can want all day. We can want all day long. We can want, 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 want literally all day. We can dream all day. We can have so many dreams. We've been dreaming since we was little. Okay, we can have so many dreams and aspirations in life. And there's a difference between that and making it a reality. Actually making this a living word in your life. Being a doer, not just a listener. Being a doer of the word. Being a doer as in like really wanting God to move in your life. Wanting better for yourself and I just want to say this to encourage somebody to put actions behind your words um eliminate the junk in your life eliminate things that are stale eliminate you know what I'm saying like time management is important it's important what you put time into it's important where your attention goes okay our um minds are fueled our feelings a lot of stuff is spiritual so we gotta be mindful of time management and what we spend our energy on what we spend our our time on you get what I'm saying Um, and I see such a difference between organizing my day with a schedule and being on purpose, actually putting purpose behind my days and being intentional, um, and making a to-do list versus just going with the flow. So I just want to, um, you know, encourage some, this is really encouragement to, to somebody to, you know, try it, try being intentional, um, putting action behind your words. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And a little tip that I do is I get dressed more often now. I do my hair. I lotion up real good. This is for men to, you know, feel good about yourself and go forward with your day. You know, get dressed nice. Get your hair cut. Get your hair done. You know, whatever, whatever. Um, I say whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> whatever you need to do. But, um, you know, feel good about yourself and go forward with your day. I feel like it makes it easier when I feel good. But, yeah, I just wanted to encourage somebody to put action behind your words. Um, wanting versus doing. And we're going to read our scripture and we're going to close out, y'all. So we have, it was a very wordy um, day today, but I feel like everything was good and on purpose for somebody. Everybody needed something. Um, So we have Romans 8, verses 18 through 28. Like I said, it's a little lengthy, but the word is going to be really short and sweet. I meant the explanation. So just follow me. I'm going to read NLT, New Living... No, is that what this is? Yeah, New Living Translation version. Like I said, it helps me break it down a little easier. And it's a little easier, I feel like, to listen to because it's straightforward. All right. The title of this is The Future Glory. That's the title in the Bible. The um, header says The Future Glory. Yet what we 
sorry. <clears throat> Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death to decay. For we know all for we know that all creation has been groaning, gro growing, groaning as the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we believers also groan when we. Uh, OK, no, I want to stop there, actually. So basically, it's talking about how so far that, um, you know, there's a day in the future that we'll see God's face There's the day in the future where um, there'll be, you know, no more pain and sorrow and crying and, and working hard and groaning in this hard life that we live. Um, there will be no more of that. We'll see God. But it's it's letting us know that. Um, hold on. That there's hope, basically. But with hope, the creation looks forward to the day we will join God's children. So it's kind of like what what made me what came to my mind with this was um, what am I working towards? Um, what am I seeking to 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 like? What am I seeking after? You know, of course, I have goals on earth, but our ultimate goal is to see God's face, and that's what also helps me with um, that uneasy feeling I feel about death. Sometimes is that. The, when I read my Bible, it reassures me that death is better than living on this earth because we're going to see God's face. So um, this, I love when I read my Bible because it, it, it comforts me about death. But anywho, uh, for we know that all creation has been groaning as the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. We've been going through stuff for like our whole life. <laughs> like we've been going, we go through some things that really hurt, that really cause us some pain and suffering. Like we go through some things right up to this moment we have. And we believers also grown, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be with, to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God gives us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies that he has promised. So it's saying, even as believers, we go through some stuff. Even as believers, we 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 go through pain. We go through things on this earth. We go through stuff. But with hope, we have that hope, that eager hope, eager hope for the day that we see God's face. And, and we have our new bodies that he promised us. We are his children. We get to be our, our full rights as his adopted children. Oh, that's so beautiful, y'all. Like, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, keep going. We were given this hope when we were saved. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't have yet, we must wait patiently and confidently. That's the second time we talked about confidence in God today. We have to be confident in, in I'm going to see his face. We have to be confident in I'm going to, to, I'm going to a place where there's no suffering and I'm going to be okay. We have to long for that place and, and have confidence in that place and have patience in that place that God has promised us. And this is what I really want to talk about, um, verse 26 um, through the rest. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. So that talks about how the, the, the first part was about how we should be strong and, you know, stuff like that and have eager faith and eager hope and stuff like that. Then this says, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For an example, we don't know what God wants us to we don't know. Okay, for an example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with growing that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows that the Holy Spirit is what the Holy Spirit is saying. For the Holy Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Okay. So I want to talk about how we when we are in these weak points that the that this verses these verses are talking about when we're going through those battles we're in pain we're going through that suffering we're going through those places where our faith is tested and we're shaking um and we don't know what to pray for we just want god to fix it we don't know what to pray for we're out of words for um you know i, I don't know if anybody's ever been in a situation well i know we there's people on here that have been on a situation where like you just don't know what to say you just want change you just want god to fix it you want something to be different this is comfort that the Holy Spirit intercedes on your behalf and expresses the words that you're trying to say and delivers them to God. You know, we have the Trinity, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. This is this is the Holy Spirit. It's one of his jobs. He's interceding on our behalf and expressing to God 
things that align. And then what got me is the part where it says, the spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's will, God's own will. Oh, uh, like the Holy Spirit is in harmony, harmonizes what we want with what God's will. Like the Holy Spirit not gone. Let's say you were supposed to um let go of this bad habit and you're sitting. Oh, uh, I don't want to go there. But like whatever we need, he's, uh, I can't even, uh, y'all. I wish I had the word spirit. The spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Hold on now. That God's like what we want and what we're asking God for, what we need. He, when he's speaking to God, he's talking as like to align it up with what God wants for us. Also, like that's all I can say. Like it goes into the next verse and we know that all, we know that God causes everything to work together. Like uh, the thing that we're crying about, the thing that we're upset about, the thing that we're pleading from God about, the Holy Spirit lines it up with God's will and allows it to play out with what God has for you. You get what I'm saying? Let's say uh, you're crying about, Lord, um, um, I'm down bad and I'm about to be evicted. I don't have anything, God. I'm... I'm down bad and I, I don't know where to turn. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do right now, God. The Holy Spirit is lining that prayer up so that everything does work. Like get like making sure that, like God's will is to pull you through. God's will is to make it happen. God's will is is to 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 prosper you, okay? And the Holy Spirit pushes that prayer to God so that it lines up with exactly with what he wants for you. And we know that, let me go to the King's Version. The King James Version does it for me for this, for this script, for this um verse. What is, hold on, let me go down. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Everything is working out just for you. When you're crying and when you're pleading and when you're down, when you're in pain, you don't know what to say. God is working it out. God is in the midst. God is holding you. God is wrapping his arms around you. And he's speaking to you, letting you know that, my child, I got you. My child, you are taken care of. My child, you are straight. You are good. You are okay. This is for his children that are called to his purpose. Get aligned with God. Get aligned with what God wants you to do. Get right with where God, what God wants for you. And everything will, will, will work out for your good. But we, there's special privileges for his children. There's special privileges for the ones that pick him. He going to take care of everybody. God is God. He's a good God. He can't, he can't not be good. He's a good God. But for his children, there's favor. For his children, there's, there's, I could just say favor. Okay? So everything will work out for your good. Pick God. He'll pick you. He loves you. He going to pick you anyway, but he, he'll, he'll rain favor on your life. I'll say that. So yeah, that's our um that's our episode today, y'all. I pray that we all soak in self-love and awareness and pick God every single day. Pick God more and more and more and more and more and more and more. Pick God every day. And um my family has a sorry y'all. Um just my mind is going. My family has a, a segment also on Chaos Block Talk Radio on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. And follow Vent Break on Instagram, V-E-N-T-B-R-E-A-K for a spiritual vitamin. I love y'all. Make today a great day.